Hi everyone, welcome to another review. This time I'm going to be reviewing Leisure Arts Watercolor and Colored Pencils. Now these products that I'm reviewing in this video were sent to me for free as part of my design team requirements for Joy Claire stamps. I was not paid for this review and I'm going to give my honest opinion. I do have to use these as part of my design team requirements for the month of June or no July excuse me for Joy Claire but other than that I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of these so let's go ahead and get started like I said I am reviewing the watercolor pencils and the colored pencils I'm gonna go ahead and start out with colored pencils because honestly that's my favorite way to color and I couldn't wait to get my hands into these now this comes in a set of 30 pencils these are artist quality pencils but on the back it says, and I don't know if this is true or not, um, all the design team got these and none of our colors varied, but it says colors may vary. So just take that into account from what you see here. Here's a look at all the colors you get in this set though, and I love that you get a white pencil with this. Sometimes in some of the cheaper sets, you don't get that, and that is a great kind of blending tool to have. Now these have a wood barrel I don't know what you would call that they have a wood barrel that holds in the lead and these are a wax based lead so they work beautifully with your gamsaw and your OMS it's actually my favorite way to kind of blend these out I find that these colors don't want to blend on their own as well as with that OMS here's a closer look at the pencil just by itself and now let's go ahead and get into some coloring so Actually, before I do that, I want to share with you how I sharpen my pencils. I use this Eye Point Evolution. I bought it at Target. It's from Westcott, uh, Westcott brand. It is a little bit pricey. I think it's about $20, $25, but it plugs in. I don't have to change batteries. I don't have to charge it. And I love the nice point it gives me on my pencils. And it doesn't seem to get dirty on the inside and like contaminate other pencils. You know how sometimes you can... Get a little bit of grime on your pencil sharpener and then it'll transfer to the next one this one doesn't do that at all and my kids use it so that's a great way to get grime on your stuff and so far so good even with them using it now my first test of these pencils was to color with just the pencils and blend them out using just the pencils themselves now these do come in a wide array of colors like I just showed you before, so you can get some good blending just by themselves. It is a little bit more of a tedious way to blend things out, but it's a beautiful way to get a picture colored as well. So I do like them. They are not, they don't blend as well as say like the Prisma colors, but these are a lot more portable than my Prisma colors because my Prismas are very heavy and they don't travel really well for me um, these are more travel friendly because it's such a smaller set it's kind of a great set to take on the road or if you're going to like a scrap and they're a lot cheaper than my Prismas so I'm not going to worry so much about like if I get out of the car and I forget they're on my lap and I drop them because you know that happens quite often or you know, if I forget them wherever I'm going, my kids want to color with them at the same time, I'm fine with it. So this is just one of those really nice little sets, cheaper sets, but you're not really giving up too much of that quality. I'm coming in with some browns on the bottom. I'm going to make this a little chocolate cupcake. And just like I would do any other time, I'm adding my shadows first. And then I come in with my lighter colors and blend them out. Most of the time when I'm coloring with alcohol markers, I start off with my lightest color and I go to my dark. I find that with my colored pencils, I start with my dark and I work my way to my lightest. And that's just what works for me. You need to kind of play around and practice and find what works for you the best. So I came in with that kind of caramel color, I guess you could say, and blended out that darker color. And that worked really well as well. Now, from far away like this, it looks pretty nice. But once you get up close, you can still see some of those pencil strokes in there. And if that is your thing, you're going to love these. But I kind of like that more flat, diluted look. So that's why I prefer to go in with OMS. Now, the last thing to do was do that little candle. So I did it with a few little greens. That blended beautifully. I'm using my white to blend in to where maybe I want it to go into white. And that worked beautifully as well. 
Now, one of the final tests is to go around my image. I like to do this a lot with my color pencils images. Go around them with a little bit of blue, and then I like to blend out into white so it looks like it's got a little bit of a halo or a haze around it just for that added kind of depth of a look in your pictures and your coloring. I came in with that blue. There was nothing lighter to blend this out with, so I used my white, and then I go over the top of that white with that blue. That lightens it up a shade. Just a nice way to get another shade out of a colored pencil you maybe don't have that goes light enough. And you can just keep switching back and forth between your white and your blue. Make sure you've got a nice sharp point on it, and that way you can get it blended out. Now, like I said before, here's a close-up of that. That was very quick, but I wanted to go ahead and put a nice little grounding effect under this as well, just to see how that did. So I start off with some grays, and I just very lightly blend this out until I get a nice shadow underneath that cupcake. And again, I'm using that white colored pencil. I know I'm going to go through this pretty fast, but there's a closer look at that. You can see not the best blending, but I did get a nice, a pretty decent blend with just my colored pencils and these only come in a pack of 30. So for 30 pencils, not doing too bad. Now I already colored one of my images with my Gamsol, but I didn't have my camera turned on. So I'm gonna color another one for you. I'm gonna use the same exact colors that I used before. Here's a look at the OMS that I use. You can call it OMS, you can call it Mineral Spirits, you can call it Gamsol, which is just the brand name of it. Whatever you wanna call it, it's the same thing. You just want to get some of that. You need some blending stumps, and then you need a sanding block. I like to use a nail buffer to do mine with. You can find those at any Sally Beauty Supply, but I like to use all those products off to the right-hand side, and that's what works for me. You can always use what works for you. I'll leave a few other options linked down below if you're interested in that. And with that sanding block, I just file off the tip of my blending stumps, and that way I get a nice, crisp, clean sanding block, but I don't lose that nice point. I was using more of a nail file, but it didn't kind of bend as I was sanding away. This has a little bit of give to it, so it keeps that nice point for me. I hope that makes sense because that's, that's kind of what happens. Now with this, you just dip your blending stump in your Gamsol or your OMS, and then you just blend it out and it takes away that streak. You can also use a brush. This is not my favorite way, but I have seen real artists like that go in and can create these masterpieces from um, colored pencils. They use brushes and it works really well for them. That's just another way you can do this if that's more your style. If you have better luck with a brush, by all means, you can do that too. It's just not for me. Now, with my um, blending, this is going to be a great way whenever you blend and you blend and you add more colors, especially with you know your wax-based pencils, eventually you're going to get wax bloom. That means that your paper just will not take any more color. You have saturated it. You have put too much color on top of color on top of color, and it's just not going to handle anymore. That OMS is going to blend that out. It's going to take that away, and you're going to be able to add more on top of that. That's just a great way to continue getting that blending. You're not going to need that many layers with this, though, because this spreads the color out. You can see just by using one or two colors, you can get some gorgeous blending just by blending this out. I was highly impressed with this. Whenever I was just getting into card making, I used Crayola colored pencils or the Crazy Art colored pencils. I used them both, and they did not blend out this well with my OMS. These kind of just blend out like, like you're spreading butter across a paper. I have to say that I was pretty impressed with these. Now, if Gamsol is not as portable for you, there are other ways that it can be portable. You can um, put it in like a baby food jar with a little, um, kind of like one of those things, a nail polish remover that used to be on the market that you could dip your fingers in. It's got a little sponge in there just like that, and then you can kind of dip your paper blending stump on that sponge, and that will pick it up. 
you just want to make sure that you're using this in a well ventilated place. Um, it is a little bit, it doesn't give me headaches. Like I said before in many videos, I've had headaches, migraines since I was tiny, and this does not bother me at all. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure you're using it in a well ventilated place so you don't make yourself high, basically. <laughs> um, all right, now on the bottom of this one, I'm going more for a vanilla look, I guess you could say. So I went in with a light brown, and then I'm just going to blend this out very well. And I am loving the way this turned out. I came in with a little bit more shadow, and then I'll, I can continue to blend this out as many times as I want to. Just keep adding that color, keep blending, and it'll just keep blending out for you. I absolutely love it. So once I had that done, it was time for the little candle on top. I'm going to be using a little bit of teal for this one. And I just went in with a little bit of orange and red and yellow on the very top to blend out that little flame on the candle. And finally, the final test, adding that little bit of halo around. I'm going to zoom you in for this one because this was stunning. I love the way it turned out. I go in and do itty bitty teeny tiny little circles. And I put a nice little generous haze around there. I'm not pressing hard at all. You don't want to press hard and leave pencil marks. You just want to scribble down little tiny circles. Then I come in with my blending stump. I'm going to load it up with some Gamsol and I just blend. You don't want to go into your color on your cupcake because that will spread it out into the blue. You want to keep this nice and clean and separate. You just come in and blend that out in circular motions and it is gorgeous. I love the way this turned out. I didn't have to use any of my white for this. I just came in with that blue, blended it out with my OMS, and it was perfect. Now, there is a final look at that. I added the grounding underneath. Again, blended that out, and it, was, it worked beautifully. I love it. There's a closer look at both just the colored pencils by themselves and then also the OMS. I'll show you a still here in just a moment but I wanted to show you adding that grounding. Like I said before, I scribble a little bit of gray underneath. For this, you don't need a lot. Then you just come in with your blending stump and continue to blend. I just pull it out to the left and the right a little bit and pull it down as well. There's one final look. The two on the outside are both OMS, and the one in the middle is the um, blending with just pencils. Now, with the OMS, you can come in and rework this as many times as you want. You can see here, this is dried. This I did the night before. I can still come back in with a brush and blend that out even more if I want to. It really is up to you how many times you want to go in with it. There's a comparison of the two ways to color with these. And finally, I want to show you something I discovered with these pencils. You can blend these out with a Dove Blender pen if that's more your style, too. So I'm going to scribble down a little bit of color. This doesn't blend the best like the OMS does, but I've got to say, I was kind of impressed. I accidentally picked up one of these when I was going for my watercolor marker, and I couldn't believe it worked. So I'm going to go ahead and scribble off any color that is on my Dove Blender pen. These are reusable, refillable pens, and you can replace the tips on them. And then I just come in and blend out. Now this is on regular cardstock. This doesn't work as well as if you were to color on a slicker surface or watercolor paper, which I'll show you now. So I'm going to grab out a little bit of watercolor paper. This is from, I believe, Arteza. This has a little bit of that kind of canvas look on it. I scribbled a little bit of regular colored pencil, and then I can go in and blend out with my Dove Blender pen, and it blends beautifully. So... If you are looking for a way to travel with those in color, I would say that is the way to go by far and color on watercolor paper or a slicker, glossy type of paper. Now, moving on to the watercolor pencils. These are also in a 30 pack of pencils and there is a brush included. I'm not sure I would keep the brush. I'll show you in just a moment. But here is a look at the array of colors you get in this set. You get gray oranges and yellows and greens and blues, but you only get one purple, which I thought was a little strange, but I can make that work. Um, I don't use purple a whole lot anyway, to be honest, but there's a look at that brush. I, I wouldn't use this. I'm just going to be honest. I have watercolor brushes that I like better that I got at Walmart, 
You can find some cheap ones at Michael's. Um, you can find cheap ones at Hobby Lobby. You can use coupons on them. They're not that expensive. And if you want it to be more portable, you can always buy water brushes like I'm using here. Here are my Walmart brushes. They work beautifully. They have a nice point on them. I think I paid like three or four bucks for them. And I use them on all of my crafting projects. And just so you get a comparison of the tapered edge on the Walmart brushes to the ones you get in this set, eh, you can use it if it works for you, but it, it didn't work for me. So I am going to show you a closer look at these pencils. These have the wood core to them. And again, then you've got that pigment, the actual lead of the pencil on the inside. You've got the color on the bottom so you know. And again, I use that same pencil sharpener for all of my pencils. It doesn't get grimy, it doesn't transfer colors, and it doesn't harm in switching up pencils. I like to sharpen my pencils before I use them just because I like that nice sharp point on there. These are watercolor pencils. You have got to use watercolor paper with them. You cannot expect these to work with regular cardstock. You just can't. Um, and also, these are different from Ink Tense pencils. Um, Ink Tense has an ink based lead in them, and they are vibrant. They are gorgeous. They are beautiful. They're not reworkable, though. These are reworkable, but they've got a much softer color to them. These you want to build up if you want that really intense color. But there are a few ways you can go about coloring with these and get that intense color. You just need to have a few different techniques up your sleeve. And I'll share those with you in a moment. So like I said, you need to scribble these on watercolor paper and then you can blend out. I like to use a water brush myself. Um, this really helps with portability. And I just blend out the color. You can come back in while everything is still wet and color right over that. That's going to give you that more intense color and then you can continue to blend out as much as your paper will allow you, I guess I should say. So make sure you're using a good watercolor paper. Now I stamped in VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then went ahead and heat set these so everything was nice and dry before I came in and colored over these. You need to use a waterproof ink with these as well. You just need to look on the back of your ink pad and make sure that it is waterproof and will play well with these. I'm coming in on this first one and on the first one I'm scribbling down color the way I normally would. And then I'll blend out with my water brush. I'm going with just straight pink all the way across, putting down the color where it would be the darkest, and then I'll blend out into the lightest. This is a great way to get a nice, soft, colored look on your cards. It's just gorgeous. And I like to keep a little bit of white space sometimes. That's just going to ha help add into the dimension of the entire finished piece. I'm coming in and just continuing to blend these out. You can go over as many times as you want. You can also pull away color just by wiping off any color on your brush and using clean water to pull away and then dabbing it off onto a dry towel. Now, next up, I'm going to be dipping the tip of my pencil into water. This is not something you want to do with your watercolor markers, but it works great for watercolor pencils. You can dip the tip as many times as you want and then scribble straight onto your paper. That's going to wet the lead, make it a little more, little bit more malleable. It's going to put down a lot more intense, intense and pigment rich color. Man, I'm having trouble talking. And I'll just scribble that again in the parts where I want it the darkest. So I'm going in the shadows of what would be the shoe here. Then I can come in with my water brush and blend out that really rich pigment. Now this is going to give you more of a true watercolor look whenever you come in with your brush. If you just want that straight, really rich color, you can continue to color until you're happy with it. You do not have to go in and blend this out, but it's a great way to get some really, really vibrant colors without a lot of work and without a lot of building. You can build and do it the traditional way and build and build and build. Or you can just wet the tip and go in with one straight layer. You can also come back in while this is still wet, color right over it, and add more color as need be, like I needed to do right in the toe of this pump. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more to the back. It was looking a little bit watered down, so I went in with some more color. 
And again, just blending that out. Now, if you have trouble with your watercolor staying inside the lines, you can heat emboss, and that will give you some little wells to kind of keep your colors in. It's a great way to do some very fast watercoloring, and it's great for beginners, or if you're experienced, it's great as well. I love to do it, but I'm not a great watercolor, so it really helps me out. Now, same thing for the black. I dipped the tip in the water, got it a little bit wet, put it down where I knew the shadow would be the darkest, and then I'm coming in and blending that out. Now you could see this was not completely dry, so I am gonna get a little bit of bleeding. That's why that kind of heat embossing helps a little bit, so you can do some fast water coloring. I like to come in and add just a little bit more color where I think I need it, and then blend it out, and that shoe is good. I really love the intense color that you get when you color like this, and it also gives that same watercolor texture but you get that really rich color. Now next up, I'm gonna pick up the tip, or pick up the color from the tip of the marker. This is just another technique you can use. If you just wanna add that little bit of color, you can color this way a whole image, but it's really great for those places where you need to add just a touch more pigment or just a touch more color, darken it up a little bit. It's great to go in for this with shadows. It's just a really great technique to have up your sleeve. So I like to use my water brush again. You want to make sure it's wet and then you just come in and pick up color from the tip of the pencil. It's really that easy. Then you can go in, put down a little bit and then blend it out with your clean water as you need, as you need to. It's really simple and easy to do. Now for this shoe, I am using that kind of hunter green color. I really love this color and I just, I like the color of this a lot. Now on that back part of the shoe, I'm going a little bit heavier handed with the color. So I'm coming in with a, just a tiny bit of a drier brush, not as wet. And I'll pick up color with just that drier tip. And that's going to give me a little bit more pigmented color whenever I pick it up. There's a closer look at that finished shoe. And again, another great tip to have up your sleeve. Now, like I said before, I was playing around with my blender dub blender pen whenever I happened to pick up the wrong pencil and it blended out with that but this works great for watercolor pencils too this is a great way to do some very fast coloring I like to scribble down the color you can see I'm really going to town here putting down quite a bit of color where I know it would be the darkest really just kind of all over the place leaving a few little white spots here and there and then I come in with my dub blender pen I do make sure that all the color is off of it um, it does get stained up a little bit. That's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. It just will get stained up. Just be aware that that happens. And then I blend out. This takes away all those lines. This is a great way to get a really nice smooth effect. And again, really fast, great way to color with these pencils. Now finally, here is the final look at that um, shoe all done. And one last thing I wanted to share with you. You can, if you want to add a little bit of sparkle to anything, you can color with these with your Wink Stella glitter brush pen. I like to use the clear. You can use the gold. You can use anything you want if, if that's more your thing, if that's the look you're going for. I like to use the clear, and it just adds a nice layer of sparkle. This is just like a water brush, so all I'm going to do is scribble down some color where I want it the darkest, and then I'll come in with that clear glitter brush pen and just blend this out and it blends beautifully now i did refill mine with water i have a video on that i'll leave that in the top right hand corner just to get another use out of it this works just the same as if it's brand new um it's going to work exactly the same as it works here with water there is a final look at this all done and you can see it does clean off really easily just scribble it off onto a piece of paper there's a look at that. You can see a little bit of the shine you get with it. It's hard to photograph shine though. So here's a closer look at that nice little sheen you get when you use the clear uh, glitter brush pen from Wink Stella. I absolutely love that look. It's great for really feminine cars. So my final thoughts on these products. Would I buy them myself? Absolutely. They both retail for $12.99, so they're not that expensive. You can pick up both sets for about $26. And I think these are great for traveling. That is what I am really looking forward to using them for. I also think these are both great for beginners. 
it's going to give you a good idea if you like coloring with colored pencils or watercolor pencils. Then go invest in a more expensive set if you find that you like coloring with the medium. These are not going to, you're not going to lose too much of that quality. You're not going to get as many colors, but it's a great way to start out and really test out and see if you like that medium or not before you fully invest in a really expensive set. And if you are an experienced crafter, I would still pick these up just for traveling purposes because they are so much easier to travel and take and then you don't worry about losing them and all that kind of stuff. For the price, you really can't beat them. That does it for me today. There are a few links on the left side of your screen you can click on. As always, thank you for watching and happy crafting.